All right, Joey, after a 10 year wait, Pikmin 4, of course, is finally here after more than 10 years, I think. Uh, so let's talk about it. You know, we both finished the game and I think we have some differing thoughts on it, even if we will probably agree in some areas, I imagine. Ochi is amazing, of course, at least uh, he's the cutest thing ever. Yeah. So I want to find out, you know, what you thought of the game, what you thought worked, what you thought didn't, and then uh, we'll be splitting this discussion up into the spoiler half and non-spoiler half. We're starting with non-spoilers, of course. Although honestly, there's not a whole lot you can really spoil here, but if you haven't finished the game yourself, Stay tuned or tune out at the end. We'll give you a warning before that point and we'll touch on everything that may be considered a spoiler then, at least so we think. So, Joey, let's kick things off here with your overall brief thoughts on how you found Pikmin 4 overall. I really enjoyed this game, very much so. Um, I, I had an interesting year because Pikmin was not a franchise I was particularly a super fan of. I've never beaten a Pikmin game before. But now that 1, 2, and 3 are all available on Switch, I decided to play them this year. Really enjoyed them, aside from Pikmin 2, which personally, I get why people like that game, but I was personally not a huge fan of that game. It was just way too difficult, and uh, and after playing that, I jumped right into Pikmin 4, the demo more specifically, and I was really hooked. And then I jumped into the full game, I was hooked even more so then. I get the gripes people have with this. The game is definitely way too easy, but as someone who just played Pikmin 2, I was like, okay, I need easy. I, I don't <laughs> need to go through this again. I know there's later challenges that are uber difficult, but I'll get to those when I can. It's super exciting collecting everything in the game. It's it's a really addicting game to 100%. I took my Switch with me on vacation, and during this some downtime, I went back to older areas, and I decided to try to 100% them. I still haven't 100% of the entire game. I'm a kind of guy that loves exploration in video games, you know, your Tears of the Kingdoms, your other big open world experiences. And while this isn't that, it's definitely got that collectathon thing going for it. And I love it for that. Can you imagine an open world Pikmin game? Dear God. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was good. Um, I have some major issues with it though at the same time that I think held it back from being like truly great. Like a lot of people are loving the game, clearly. I'm not one of them. I had a good time with it, but at the same time I bumped up against a few a fair amount of things with it. But um, I think the things it does well, it does very well. Collecting treasure, as you were saying, it just feels good. It always has, it feels really good here too. Um, I think the graphics are great. The uh, the level design in particular, I think is a really strong point of the game for the most part, because it harkens back to that more open design to Pikmin 1, which I really liked. Uh, but then I uh, bump up against some other things too that um, kind of are major components and it really kind of affected my overall enjoyment even if I hung in you know hung in until the end so yeah I'll touch on those I'm sure as we get into it but let's go ahead and start off on a more positive note here Joey or continue on a positive note let's talk about what this game did right what parts did you find worked really for you so let's start off with your with something you enjoyed two words oh chi <laughs> is that how words work <laughs> i guess so. I'm, tr I'm trying to be like <laughs> phil from hercules you know uh, um Respect yeah it. i really like of course pochi's an adorable dog right we already know that but functionality to the gameplay i think he i think he serves the gameplay really well because for one he acts as you know the the louis in pikmin 2 um where you can swap between him or you can just um you could just hop on board him and then just ride through the levels uh with all your pikmin in one huddled section which is really helpful for combat. I realized that later on. I'm like, oh, I don't have to have all my Pikmin just scattered around waiting to get yep. run over by a boulder. I can just have them ride Yo Ochi. And as you keep upgrading him, he can lift super heavy things. He can swim in water really fast. And he's just su a super cool dude. <laughs> he is. Ochi's adorable. Um, as you said, like you can swim with him. You can even target you know, water-based enemies with non-water Pikmin just because you can swim around with them and just call them back before they start drowning. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Ochi, I think, is is a second captain done right. Like, they finally figured it out in that, for me especially, like, I've always found having two, and especially three captains of Pikmin 3, a little confusing. Like, once I move over to another captain, I completely forget what I was doing before, what I'm supposed to be doing now, and it just, like, it throws off my sense of space. It always just, I found that confusing. And the fact that you can o use Ochi as one, kind of a more of a platforming like character, along with uh, Olimar, or not Olimar, your, your main custom guy in this case, <laughs> uh, is awesome like that. But also you can use them for like secondary functions too. You can use them as a whole second captain. I didn't do, I didn't do that whole, uh, a whole lot, but you can use them to uh, automate some tasks like round up Pikmin and bring them back. Or you can use them to attack enemies or bring back even huge treasures. So that's all really nice. Even if I feel like, you know, maybe at times it went a little too far because it kind of does simplify the gameplay 
to a degree where like, you know, as, as I'm sure we'll touch on, the difficulty isn't too extreme in this case. Uh, but overall, Ochi, big win. Uh, very cute. Liked him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the official Game Explain rating of Ochi. Liked of Ochi. a lot. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, super cool stuff with Ochi. Um, and I really just like the overall visual presentation of the game. Um, it's gorgeous. It yeah. is absolutely gorgeous. Definitely made it to like the top five, maybe even top three best looking Switch games. Um, it definitely has a sort of st it has a stylized realism to it, whereas of course the main characters themselves are just you know they're cartoony little fellas, really cute stuff there. But then like you go out into the world, I believe this game is also running on Unreal Engine Four. Just a top tier presented game makes me wonder what how a Pikmin Five would look on that Switch Two. But we've talked enough about Switch Two this entire week, so <laughs> yeah, we don't need any more of that. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it looks great. And I think adding to that too, as I touched on earlier, is the new camera, which really allows you to take in the environment, makes you really truly feel like you're this really these small creatures, which is something that could get lost in the camera angle from the previous games. You know, particularly when you're in the garden or inside the house, you really you really truly get that sense of scale now. Like, wow, I'm this really tiny little guy, and uh, controlling these even smaller creatures, and and that's cool. Um, you know, the only maybe shortcoming of that is there are times when it's clear where the level geometry ends and the skybox begins. It's like, okay, there's nothing between those two, you know? <laughs> but by and large, they disguise it pretty well. I think it's a great looking game. It runs smooth for the most part, almost entirely, in fact. The only thing that, uh, I guess isn't really a presentation thing. I just wish they did retain the co-op, the split screen co-op from Pikmin 3, especially because we have this perfect partner in Ochi that'll be perfect as a second companion, second player companion, but... What can you do? Is there any other positives you had a uh, feeling about this game, Andre? <laughs> yes, I, I. this one will almost betray what my complaints are coming up, but I have to give it the attention it's due. I have to give it uh, the attention it deserves. Being Olimar's shipwreck tale. This is awesome. This is what I had hoped the entirety of Pikmin 4 would be. It is basically the essence of Pikmin 1. You have a time limit, you gotta find a lot of crap, and uh, <laughs> there's nothing else getting in the way. There's almost no story, there's no hub or characters talking to you constantly. There's no caves to explore. I love this. It was a focus on that pure gameplay. The moment I hopped into it, I'm like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. This feels great. It was direct to the point, uh, uh, stress inducing with that really tight time limit this time. Like I was almost down to the wire in this and I love that. Like that, that actually made me feel like I get it. I get Dandori. I need to do it to <laughs> succeed here. And I loved it. I thought that was great. That felt like the true sequel to Pikmin 1. I've been waiting literally since Pikmin 1 for over 20 years at this point. So I really can't sing the praise of the Olimar Shipwreck Tale enough, except I wish it were longer. It mm -hmm. is a side mode to this game. It has minimal presentation, which, you know, I had a, as, a, as a partial perk earlier. I wish, I do wish I had like a proper intro and ending and whatnot, but for what it is, I enjoyed it as a side mode in this game. It's about a four hour adventure. I loved it, as a had a blast with it. Um, I just wish that they had added a little more replayability to it too. You know, made it longer, gave us, especially if they had given us reason to replay, like randomize the treasure locations, give us a hard mode of fewer days. I think I could have just sat there the entire time just playing that one mode in particular. I thought it was great, beautiful, good stuff. <laughs> I haven't played that yet, but to me it sounds like it's kind of a remake of sorts of Pikmin 1. In that sense. Yeah, well, this entire game, in a sense, is a remake. <laughs> uh, but it, but in particular, that that is effectively retelling the story of Pikmin One, and I thought it was great. The only the major difference is you have half the amount of days that you did before, meaning you you have to really maintain this quick pace throughout. And again, I I love that. It really made it feel like I had to uh, plan my days properly. I had to truly again use Dendori. I had to you know move Pikmin around. I couldn't just like sit with them in one area as you kind of can in the main quest of Pikmin Four. Just babysit them the entire time. I had to actually truly like go out there, be efficient, uh, especially when it came to like, you know, growing more Pikmin and, you know, how much time do I want to spend growing Pikmin versus, uh, you know, using the ones I have to complete my objectives. Like, it gets scary. Like, when you have a day and you don't find any treasure, it's like, this is going to be behind schedule. Like, I'm two <laughs> days behind schedule. I'm going to be screwed. But then I pulled off in the end and it delivers a feeling that, again, I have not had since Pikmin 1. I'm like, yes, that was great. So, Joey, you need to play it. I'll be curious to hear your thoughts when you do, so. For sure, yeah. I'm going to have to check that out. And, and speaking of difficulties, um, I, know, I think, so So we talk about how easy this game is, right? But still, that doesn't change the fact that this game has, like, essential quality of life features that I don't feel like that they nerf the game. I feel like they just make the game fair. Um, like, like Rewind Time, for example, which is just super handy in the sub-levels, and it's something I wish I had in Pikmin 2. Like, it would, yeah, sure, in Pikmin 2, every sub-level would save when you got to it, but I'd have to like restart my game every time in case I lost too many Pikmin. 
And I know people are going to comment, Dandori issue, but I don't care. I want to have fun when I play my games, and that's not fun. Um, so I'm glad they included that, but I'm also glad they included the items you find in Russ's shop, the items you buy with raw materials. Um, I forget the names of these items off the top of my head, but they're the ones that call back the Pikmin to you. They're the ones that call them back to your home base. And, and, and even though I've enjoyed most of the Pikmin games that I've played, that was always a... That was always annoying to me, having to find them after I lost them, so I'm glad those were ways to seamline that process for Maximum Dandori. <laughs> yeah, they definitely, that along with the Ochi abilities, uh, there were a lot of quality of life improvements, I would say. They definitely make it um, less frustrating to to play at points. Mm -hmm. uh, the pathfinding in general is better, though not perfect for the Pikmin. They still get hung up when you whistle at them and they can see you, but they can't figure out how to climb a ramp for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, but though they can navigate the rest of the environment just fine. But yeah, being able to call Pikmin home from anywhere or, or using the idle whistle pull them to where you are currently, that's all great stuff. Even if, you know, it, it's, it's, it, there's this weird balance and conflict, I feel like, because on the one hand, I appreciate that. Like, it's it's making, it's streamlining things, it's making it a little bit easier. I don't have to worry about doing these things. On the other hand, it does take away, chip away a little bit at that core gameplay essence, which was that you had to, you know, manage the Pikmin that finished a task before. Like, one of my favorite things in previous, the first two games, I guess first three games, actually, was the end of day roundup. You got those, that final 10 seconds, and you're like, hustling to get all your Pikmin before you get, before they're lost. And it's almost a complete non-issue this time. Mm -hmm. This is just blow the whistle, and they'll all find their own way back. So it's weird in that, on the one hand, I appreciate it. On the other hand, it does kind of like chip away at, like, some of the enjoyment I had before. But putting that aside, the rest of the, the rest of the improvements are, I think, overall great. Um, and I imagine that even if Pikmin 1 may still be my overall favorite, especially at the time I played it, mm -hmm. I'm sure there are moments of that game that will frustrate me more coming from Pikmin 4. I'm like, ooh, I can't wait, you know, why is this Pikmin trying to drown itself, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that really happens in the new one, which I do, uh, which I Oh am man, anytime a, a Pikmin finds its way into water for some reason, I'm just like, you know what? Just, just drown. I don't care about yeah. you anymore. You're clearly useless <laughs> if you're that dumb. But, <laughs> not to get too aggressive here, but yeah, that's how I feel about that, but... Yeah, I, I still really enjoyed Pikmin 4, the, Pikmin 4, Pikmin 4, my goodness, 4-4, so, 4-4, so, four, 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 so many 4s in this case. A lot of 4s. I really liked this game because mainly, I just like collecting things, man, and I love 100%ing games. Yeah. It totally just fills my, the part of my soul that just loves, like, completing checklists, right? And they do it in such <laughs> a way that only Pikmin can do it. Uh, a lot of this game has changed from the previous games, um, especially with that new camera angle, especially with the way it controls, like with the lock-on and such. Um, but I still feel like this game isn't too big of a departure from the series, whereas we compare it to something like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, which some argue is a huge, huge departure from what Zelda used to be. I still, f I that thought, the thought crossed my mind of how will old school Pikmin fans feel about Pikmin 4? But I still think for the most part, it's 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 largely the same game, even if it makes some really substantial changes. Yeah, that's interesting because I I as a Gen Oneer, if you will, for Pikmin, <laughs> I don't fully agree with that. I know a lot of people obviously would. It's, I mean, it's especially weird because Pikmin One and Pikmin Two almost introduced two different ideas or two different ways of playing. Nintendo themselves commented on how they grap you know grappled with this and struggled with this in making Pikmin Three and especially Pikmin Four. Um, because, yeah, in one you have a time limit, in the other you don't, and there's a few other differences in there as well, like having multiple captains, and it does kind of change that core gameplay, and I feel like they haven't fully gone back to that gameplay that I loved so much in one, except now, finally, in all of our Shipwreck Tale, which again is, you know, half the length of maybe Pikmin 1 even, which is really short. I totally understand all that, too. I really liked Pikmin 1, and that's that I played that, like... 22 years after it came out for the first that's time. That's impressive, yeah. Yeah, it's and I totally get like wanting that experience again. And of course, since I just recently played it, I don't have that much of an attachment as you do, but that's a totally valid like complaint, concern, whatever you may call it, critique. Yeah, like there was something about that first Pikmin game that two and three and even four have failed to replicate. And uh, it's interesting because how do you bring that back in this day and age? Yeah, I've got some ideas. Maybe it maybe be worth its own discussion because right. it is it is a challenging topic. They tried to do it in three, and I don't think they quite succeeded at that either. But at least it was, you know, they try to find a halfway point at least. But in any case, are there any other positives we want to uh, give this game credit before we get into uh, some of at least my issues with it? I, I don't know. I feel like I've covered everything of what I really liked about this game. Um, there's probably some things I'm missing off the top of my head, 
but those are the big changes that stand out to me. Like, I know for a fact, like, I've just enjoyed my time with this game, like, 99% of the time. So, oh, wow. Or maybe 95, if I'm being more realistic. But, yeah, it, it's a really fun game, and I've I've got some... I'm interested to hear your qualms with it, because chances are I'm going to agree with most of them. <laughs> uh, they just might... I just might not feel that they affect my enjoyment of it too much. Right. Yeah, it's funny because you mentioned you enjoyed it 99% of the time. I'm closer to, like, 50-60%. And, oh, wow. uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold off on that. That's a tease <laughs> for my complaint. People can already probably figure it out. In any case, I've got, I think, three main issues here that probably can, can, you know, are consist of other sub-issues, like sub-caverns. So, yeah. uh, but let's start off with the let's start off with the smallest one. My smallest issue, it, it's probably it wouldn't probably affect my overall opinion much, but it kept happening enough that it aggravated me. And that's the controls, most specifically the freaking lock on. They had it nailed in Pikmin Three. Yeah, the free pointer control. You can lock on if you want to. Here though, the lock on is automatic. You have no control over it. Uh, you can't really vary it. There is an option to, I believe, like where you can free aim away from it, but only within a certain radius, so it doesn't really solve the issue at all. And uh, I, I just kept finding myself targeting things when I, you know, when I didn't want to. Like, if there's a treasure next to an enemy, I would throw crap at the, you know, pick crap, Pikmin, sorry, <laughs> at the treasure rather than at the enemy, and then that would result in dead Pikmin, you know? Um, so I wish that there was a toggle for the lock-on. Just let me, just give me that free aim ability. They had so perfectly nailed the Pikmin 3. I don't know why it's not back. Yeah, I wonder if that has to do with, like, the camera angle. I don't know if that is a good reason for it, but Pikmin 3 Deluxe, you just pressed ZR to lock on, right? Yeah, uh, and it worked they, great. Yeah, and like they have a feature like that. Is I think you were just talking about that feature where like you do press ZR, but like I guess it stays locked on there. I'm I'm not quite sure. I personally never really had that much of a problem with the auto lock on, but I understand why people think it's an annoyance. I don't recall like ever having like if I did have that issue it was maybe like once or twice where you'd hit something else that you'd want to hit. Um, but but the fact that it's not toggleable is is inexcusable, and hopefully there's an update to fix that. Yeah, I just hate having control taken away from me, and so when I don't have that one-to-one -one pointer control, like, it just really de detracts from the uh, experience for me. But again, you know, that's the least of my complaints. So <laughs> let me go into number two, which is a bigger one. I've already kind of touched on it, and again, you can categorize this in a few different ways. But I think for, as, as I may have even said earlier, for as big of a deal as Nintendo made about about Dandori, it feels like it doesn't really matter in this game. You don't have to be efficient. The game even, the game is almost brain dead simple at points and how it straight up tells you which pick, you can automate it so it just gives the Pikmin the things you need. And it's more often than not, right on. And so I don't need to think about that. I don't have to worry about like gathering Pikmin too much. And uh, the, the fact that the, the biggest issue here is that there's no, time limit. Now, I get some people hate time limits. I totally get that. Like, it adds stress to it. I don't mind that when it's done well. But my issue is that not having a time limit is direct, directly contradictory to their whole Dandori uh, feature here. Because without that, there's no reason to to be efficient. There's no reason, or to try to be efficient at least. Like, most of the time, as I mentioned, or a lot of the time, you know, I could just walk around with my 50 plus Pikmin. We could go, you know, I'll go knock down a wall. Maybe I'll grab something nearby. But like, I can, can we can stay consolidated by and large, but I don't have to worry about trying to multitask and do a variety of things, but there's no incentive to. There's no, in, there, there's no bonus for it. There's no reward. Um, so I just play the game in a very casual way, which is the exact opposite of how I play Pikmin 1 and, of course, Olimar's Shipwreck Tale. And the fact uh, I don't have that external in incentive to do it really to dampen my enjoyment of the game. Because I'm like, why, you know, my actions don't really have weight. I can do whatever I need to. If I need more Pikmin, I can take a few days off and go grab them if I want. I never needed <laughs> to do that. But it, just in case if it were an issue, I could do that if I needed to. And I felt like it wasn't really challenging me in that sense. Like, not that I need the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay to be difficult, but I do want that overall pressure. And that's why I feel like Pikmin 1 really nailed. Like, that Pikmin 1 is basically Nintendo's take on RTS. Mm -hmm. And most RTS is even enemy force acting against you. So if you take your time, you're going to get decimated. In Pikmin 1, that was replaced with a time limit. But once it got rid of that in 2 and basically 3 and especially 4, there's no external pressure at all. The only pressure is how many Pikmin you lose moment to moment, which, as we discussed earlier, isn't much of an issue. And if it is, you can just go grow more. So that, for me, is my biggest problem with the game, or actually not my biggest, my second biggest, <laughs> uh, even if all of our shipwreck tale, again, kind of, you know, somewhat mitigates it just because it is that, that that little pocket of Pikmin gameplay I really love. I just wish there was more of it throughout, you know? Right, yeah. I feel like they could have benefited. Maybe, like, a future Pikmin game can do this, but, like, 
Give, give if players they give players the choice if they do they want to play this with a time limit or not i wonder why like they haven't decided to do that yet i'm not a game designer i don't know if that really just affects like everything if you give players the choice between that stuff but i think what makes me laugh is the fact that there are dandori battles in this game i also don't know why they do them split screen that that's really it, annoying <laughs> yeah there's no reason for it to be a split screen i mean unless you're trying to screen peek but i, I feel like we've been <laughs> trained out of that after decades of being having our um, our arms punched by friends you know, yes. for screen peeking uh and, and also uh, uh this is a minor complaint i find the dindori battles maybe it's a squish screen maybe it's all the pikmin of two teams i find them confusing like there's so much going on i don't know it's like that's not like that's not the type of gameplay i want either from pikmin there's it's a lot of stuff on screen <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot going on but uh they were fine i mean they were they're they aren't even that big of an element in the game either. Again, for all the Dendori talk, I had three of them before I reached, uh, you know, what you know, an initial key point of the game. So. Yeah, and just the fact that these these leaf leafy creatures are like so obsessed with Dendori, you think they'd be better at it. I'm sorry, <laughs> these things. We talk about the game being too easy. I think these are like the biggest like these are these are the biggest problems for me is that a lot of these were way too easy i didn't have a real challenge until the very last one where i tried it like right. five times that was actually challenging but i see these guys man, it's so funny like here's an argument against split screen don't show me how bad the cpu is at dandori <laughs> yeah it kind of does take away from it when you realize the i mean first off yes they're, they're an idiot but it feels even worse when that idiot beats you still yes <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, split screen is a weird choice for that. I guess maybe just to, to just to cue you into the fact that they're multiplayer enabled, so you can play with two people if you want. I think I haven't I haven't tested that myself. I probably never will. <laughs> uh, in any case, so yeah, complaint number two again: low focus on D Dandori, no time limit. But I think the thing, Joey, that bugs me the most about this game because even taking the game for what it is, the thing that bugged me the most, and again, this is why I say it's a sequel to Pikmin 2, the freaking caves! I swear to God, if, you, if I watch back my videos on this game, half of it, close to half, it has to be in those caves. And even though they are better than Pikmin 2s, they're actually bespoke now, they're hand designed, they're not randomly generated, which is all great stuff, there's too many of them, they take too long, each one takes 30 minutes, or not not necessarily, but upwards of 30 minutes, it feels like, and it, it, it I have, so my issue is that one, it totally interrupts my my flow in the world because it resets everything you're doing. Whatever Pikmin you have, they drop it. You have to come back and deal with it later. You can even remember what you were doing earlier when you come back. But then, you know, and then you have that 30 minute chunk of your day taken up, which is longer than the actual real time days in the game, or not real time, but the actual time of day in the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then though they're just I found them boring like they, they all look pretty similar They're all dark in the underground and, and murky and I didn't like it The puzzles are all pretty basic like if I have to do one more separating puzzle You know where your characters get separated. I'm gonna l blow a gasket. I'm <laughs> I don't want to see those ever again And uh, I, I just didn't like I I was sick of them by the end I'm like I don't want I, mean, I was sick of them well before the end I don't want to see any more caves of Pikmin I don't know when Nintendo's recent obsession with the underground is between Tears of the Kingdom and now Pikmin 4 They're obsessed with it Pikmin 3 had no caves like this and I appreciate it now You know Pikmin 4 brought them back from Pikmin 2 for whatever reason mm -hmm. That was interesting right and you know I also have the same hatred for caves as you do but only in Pikmin 1 I, I mean, Pikmin 2. Wait, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but, and I hear your complaints, and I understand them. I might even agree with them. But for some reason, they don't really affect me that much. Like, I, I play, I go inside a cave, and I don't feel like my eyes are rolling when I enter a cave. Like, I'm just like, oh, here we go, it's another cave. And for the most part, I feel like I have a good time in them. But it's mainly because the, the biggest problems I had with the caves in Pikmin 2 were that they, they were just, um... I feel like the, the caves took way more of time in Pikmin 2 than they ever did in 4. And not that I disagree with you, they do take a lot of time in Pikmin 4. But 2, I felt like like 89% of my time was spent in those caves in 2. Pikmin 4, maybe half. Um, but just the fact that they're handcrafted and they're, and they're now randomly generated. And j the accessibility also just makes a huge difference there. Um, yeah, I didn't really mind them that much. Um, I... Would I prefer if the games were just largely set on the above ground? Probably. But as it is, I feel like the caves for me are mostly inoffensive. That's awesome. Like, I wish I felt that way. It was <laughs> right. such a big part of this game. Like, it, it almost affected my enjoyment of the overworld. Because, you know, I like game treasure. I like exploring, too. But when the reward is these 
these caves where I have to go underground for 30 minutes. Like, oh man, I don't, that's not a reward. That's a detriment. <laughs> I wish I hadn't found you, you know? It's interesting that they brought them back. To me, it just feels like Nintendo wanted to pad out the game, you know, without breaking the budget. So instead of having either a shorter game or, um, I guess I'll be it. Instead of having just a shorter game period, they decided to add these caves to elongate it. And I just wish, you know, I, just, I would prefer just the core overall experience. Because again, I like the overall design. I think it's really good. I think yeah. it actually might be the strongest of the series uh, if it weren't for those freaking caves. So, mm -hmm. Right. It is an interesting choice that they brought back the caves. I will say that. But at least, at least they're a, like a huge step above the ones in Pikmin Two. If largely, <laughs> I for can't those, disagree with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, largely for those um, accessibility features. But you know, if Pikmin Five didn't have them. Like, fine, I'm I'm okay with that. And uh, now I'm starting to think like, what what did I do a lot in Pikmin Three? It feels like forever ago that I played that game, even though it was a few months ago. Because that game didn't have caves, right? It was just a huge, it, huge areas, right? Yeah, pretty much. It, it did have like it technically had its own caves, like underground areas, but they weren't mm -hmm. separate from the overworld like they right. are here. Like they were part of the world, so you just happen to go indoors at points. And I thought that was great. Pikmin 3, uh, yeah, I actually really liked a lot of Pikmin 3, um, but one thing I didn't like was how, uh, partially because of those actually caves or tunnels or whatever, they they really gave the uh, the maps this, this almost um, this segmented feel. You had right. all these different areas connected by these little tiny paths, and it made it really confusing. So I'm glad Pikmin 4 returned more to how Pikmin 1 and uh, Pikmin 2 even, I guess, to a degree. I'm starting um, to want that that major open world Pikmin game that we were just talking about. <laughs> I know, about right? I, you know, I actually do think it'd be a cool idea if if all the maps, like like in Pikmin 4 versus, were all like next to each other. And yeah. so you, the way you went around is you just found different bases, which by the way was a good thing. I like the idea, having different bases. And with that idea, just make it so it's just one giant world. You could do it that way. And I think it actually could work, so. I'm willing to bet that that's probably what they'll do for the next game, but uh, yeah, that we're, we don't want to predict the next game. Yeah, we just want to focus on this one but uh right. yeah i totally get the i really do understand like the the criticisms of the caves i understand all your criticisms really i just feel like i they didn't affect me as much but i'm also not i'm also a new pikmin fan like i'm a brand spanking new out of the womb <laughs> pikmin fan but you've been yeah. in this You've been in this game since day one, so. <laughs> that's, that's actually an interesting point. Yeah, totally. I can see it because, you know, for me, the, the Pikmin I've enjoyed, I've now been familiar with for 20 years. And uh, for you, it's been like a few weeks, basically. <laughs> um, but because, yeah, I guess for me, you know, just so people know at our, you know, in our audience, because I haven't made it clear enough. <laughs> like, I feel like for me, Pikmin, like the idea of Pikmin, the challenge of Pikmin has always been a time limit. So when you remove that time limit, you kind of remove the core essence of Pikmin. And, it, you know, again, they tried to bring it back in three, they didn't fully succeed in my opinion. Um, but, you know, I am happy we at least got a taste of it with, again, all of our shipwreck tale. Uh, so, yeah, again, Joe, I'd be curious to hear, you know, what you think of that uh, when you get back to it. Um, I think there are a few other elements though, of Pikmin 4 we haven't fully touched on yet. There are some new Pikmin types. Well, oh, actually, right. before even that, I mean, yeah, we have the Ice Pikmin, which allow you to freeze enemies in water, which is kind of cool, a little underutilized. Makes the game very easy. Makes it very easy, <laughs> yes, unfortunately. You just freeze enemies and break them, um, like as if they're a T-1000. Though well, at least that guy came <laughs> back. The enemies here are screwed. Right. Uh, but then you also have the Glow Pikmin, which appear only at night in the new night missions. What did you think of those, by the way? We didn't we even touch on this. Like It seemed like it could have been a major element. The but fact that we isn't. didn't touch on them, I think, says it all. Um, <laughs> yeah. they're, here's the thing. I think they're fine, but... The more I'm thinking about them, the less I'm starting to like them. Um, I still think that they're totally, like, they're fun for what they are. But I, I do feel like it is kind of frustrating having to choose between, like, a day mission and a night yep. mission. I'm like, why can't I do the day mission first and then transition over to night if I wanted to? I feel like they could have really figured out a better way to work that system out. And, yeah, they did kind of tease, like, oh, this is going to be the first time you go at night. Like, get right. ready. The enemies are tougher. No, they're not. I'm sorry. They're not. They're just they, <laughs> they're they, they're just more in numbers. And the glow Pikmin. We talk about ice Pikmin being OP. The glow Pikmin literally can't die, if I recall correctly, because I think they said that in one of those little speech things they do at night, which I just skip every time now. Yeah, they're, those are very invincible. They can do like um, they can explode and stun enemies like for a very long time. The, they freeze enemies like the ice Pikmin. Oh my goodness. They're literally just yeah. ice Pikmin, but not icy. Uh, like the caves, I feel like they're fairly inoffensive. But now the more yeah. I'm thinking about them, they really could have been done better. I, I fully agree with that. They're inoffensive. Like, they're they're the least of my issues of the game, if, if they even are an issue. Like, I like the idea of Night Battles. The way they did it here is, is, is okay. You know, I like the tower defense idea. 
but I feel like they didn't go far enough with it. Like, you know, as you're basically suggesting, like, they don't feel connected to the main game. They're effectively a side mode, almost like the side missions you had or the challenge mode in Pikmin 3 Deluxe, I think. Or, right. Or even here in, Ship in Shipwreck's Tale. Yeah, they, they just don't feel connected. They're like this vacuum of a challenge where they give you everything you need, you know, to start with, and nothing you did in the daytime matters at all. I don't think there's anything you do outside of the night missions that affect your performance of one or not. It just feels like an instanced version of Salmon Run. And again, like, <laughs> the idea of it's kind of cool, but I feel like there's so much more they can do with it. You know, like, if... One idea would be like, hey, what if your ship couldn't take off at night? Well, in this game, your ship doesn't take off at all. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it does. Your mini ship? Uh, how? The I'm Beagle, right? How this game works. Like the SS Beagle, that little thing. Yeah, the Beagle, yeah. thank you. Uh, like, it, maybe it one, you know, every now and then it can't take off. You have to hold the fort down. You gotta protect yourself. Like, that's your drive why you gotta survive. Rather than this, this really side mode you can just largely ignore unless you wanna heal or, you know, save all the. Uh, the leafy people you rescued. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I thought it was fine. It was it was interesting at points, but it also got a little tiresome too. Like there's not a whole lot to it. Go grab Pikmin, throw them at things, and that shit. Like there's even less endure here than in the main mode. Um, but I, you know, I did kind of like. I don't know, oh, so back way and forth less. on it. <laughs> yeah, there it really is. It's a weird mode. Um, I hope they I hope they re-explore the idea of night mode in the future. But I think there's so much more you can do with it than just what they did here so yeah i thought there would be like actual missions that night where you would like go right. and, and go to places and stuff but no it was basically tower defense which in, in in and of itself is not too like crazy of an idea for pikmin but yeah i felt like it was maybe a too simple i think is the right. i think is the curse of night mode what did you think of the uh, overall presentation i know we touched on some of it earlier like the graphics but i guess there's everything else too and including story which we'll touch on uh in the spoiler section soon enough yeah well but i will say about the story way too chatty yeah, Way I was gonna make, too chatty. It, shut up! Shut up! I don't care. There's nothing any of you have to say that I'm gonna care one iota about. Like yes. I, the story already doesn't seem to doesn't. It, it, there isn't much story here. Right. There's more dialogue than the low mouth story warrants, and there are so many characters this time that they're all chatty. And as a consequence of all these characters, that hub, which is effectively a main menu, is a complete mess. Yeah. Because, like, all your key things are scattered around to different characters. I just stopped caring at some point, and, uh, and it made me miss uh, the elegance of the first two Pikmin, three to a lesser extent, where, like, you know, the story is all, all, is all that Olimar or his partner had to say at the end of the day. And that's it. You go right back in the next day. Yeah, and, the, like, those, just the, the th those things I talk about skipping, like, every time you complete a mission... Like, it cuts to outside of the ship, and they're just like, Oh, who drank my nectar? Oh, it was Jeff? Oh, silly Jeff. Stuff like that. I don't... It's <laughs> yeah. not funny. It's not cool. I don't care. Skip. Yeah, I mean, I don't want... I, yeah, like, you know, it, I'm sure, like, there is some clever dialogue in there. You know, I appreciate the thought that must have gone into it on behalf of the original writers right. in Treehouse. On the other hand, I'm sorry. I can't bring myself to care about it. I, right. that, I, I well, I'm here for the gameplay. I'm not here for the story. And uh, and please have less of it in the future. For me, at least, that's I know some people will disagree with me. I know but. that I know children have to be entertained too when they play these games. Like, I can, but I also can't imagine a child ever playing Pikmin. It's just way too, way too complicated for them. Maybe I could be totally right. wrong here, but yeah, um, I, I'd still I'd still appreciate that there is dialogue in general. You know, like I don't want this to be just like a just an emotionless personality less uh, landscape. No, yeah, not at all. Um, like, I mean, again, I think Pikmin 1 really did a great job. You had those, like, you know, little journal wrap-ups at the end of the day. You're hearing yeah. it from Olimar's perspective. That was really fun, and I, did, I think just having more characters that kind of complicates everything. Yeah. Um, in any case, uh, speaking of the presentation, another shout-out to Olimar's Shipwreck Tale. If only for the specific day transition, where you have the little countdown, it goes, like, from 13 to 12 days, 12 to 11. I love that. I, it's so good. It's like, yes, this is what I want! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Give me more of that. Oh. All right. all right. Spoiler time? Is it spoiler time? I think it's spoiler time. Yeah, Joey, right. do you have something you want to get off your chest uh, or something you want to praise about anything in the spoilers, whether it's a story or final boss or whatever else? All right. So again, I real quick, just to drive the point home, we are now spoiler territory. Tune out if you've not been in the game. Yeah, right. I mean, I, you know, we talked about so much, I feel like there's hardly anything else to spoil <laughs> except, <laughs> like, except the fact that uh, Pikmin 2 did this also, and I don't know why they did it in Pikmin 4, where they put end credits... And, but the game's not over, so no. it's not even like... I'd understand if the prologue was short, right? Like, a really short segment. Perhaps that. I'd also understand if they did a little fake-out thing, like with Kid Icarus Uprising, which was very yeah. clever. Where it's like, they roll the credits, and then, oh, here comes Hades with the chair! Yeah. So cool. Um, But then Pikmin 4 does it, Pikmin 2 did it. 
but the story is not over. Like, it's, no. there's nothing that indicates, like, okay, here's a transition to the to like something some smaller section no there's a very relevant plot situation going on ochi's like infected with something and we gotta cure him that's a very important part of the story why'd you give me end credits this is i know i sound like i'm such a complainer right now it's such a minor nitpick that's so inoffensive but i just hate it when video games do this like kojima yeah. does this in metal gear solid and i hate it then so yeah yeah, I yeah. Just, it, no. it's annoying I hear you. Like, yeah, it, ultimately, it's not a big deal. Like, I almost forgot about it as soon as it happened. But at mm -hmm. the same time, it's like, if you're going to do it, at least do it right. Do it well. You know, Kid Icarus is a great example. Like, it almost think, makes you think the game is actually over. And it's like, oh, no. But it actually feels like it's over. Like, you beat a boss. It's like, all right, that felt climatic. I guess I'm done. And then it keeps on going. It's like, oh, my, there's a lot more. Whereas in Pikmin, it's obvious it's not over. Like, not only is it clear the story itself isn't over, it doesn't feel climatic at all. It ends in a Dandori battle against Olimar, which is something you've barely even participated in up to this point in the game at least yeah. for me i'd done two before then and to get there you unlock the safe that i cheese by guessing the rest of the numbers you know <laughs> yeah. um so yeah it's like why 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 like they, i feel like they did it just so people can say like oh i beat it even though they didn't really you know you and, yeah exactly if you if you got to the end credits you did not beat this game when you see no. a the end screen at the very end that's when you know you've beaten it but, uh, yeah, again, it's just relatively inoffensive. I just like complaining about things. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, speaking of the story, then, how about we, uh, you know, what about the rest of the story? Like, you continue past that point, you do the rest of the missions, you can find more of the people if you want, and then, of course, you end up uh, in, I guess, the final... Well, you have to go rescue... Uh, is it the captain you need to rescue? you got to rescue no, the... the dog, I think. Moss. Yeah. You rescue the dog, Moss, I think. That's right, and rescue then, Moss. And then you figure out, like, oh, um, no, you, it's not Moss, actually. It's, it's, they, because you find out, like, you, there's these, these astronauts you gotta rescue from the planet Kopai, from, uh, Pikmin 3, which is a really cool tie-in. And one of them is a vet, and the vet needs to look at Ochi, because we need to figure out what's wrong with Ochi. And they figure out, oh, Ochi's cure, I think, I'm just paraphrasing, I don't know exactly the entire details of it all, but basically, the cure can be found from this dog that... Frickin' Louie has. Frickin' Louie's yep. back. Louie is... First of all, does this man just keep getting away with everything? Why has this man not been given... This man needs to be serving a sentence in jail he for he's everything he's done. Like, <laughs> I don't care what timeline Pikmin 4 is. Like, he he needs to serve the sentence for the stuff he's did in the other timeline. That's My true. goodness. And it was actually spoiled for me because I checked your stream because I'm like, huh, how much is left? How much is left, Andre? I know he just beat it. And then I saw Louie and I'm like, oh, well, I guess that makes sense. I guess. <laughs> how can you can't you can't leave Louie out anymore? Like he's I, I love how I called him in my YouTube short a lovable sidekick. But I also know that's <laughs> not a, true at all. Yeah. I just, <laughs> he's a jerk. He's scummy. <laughs> so what did you think of the final boss? The whole final segment, I guess. You know, you go through like 20 caves. Literally, you get to the final boss. It's a giant dog. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of all that? So, uh, th shout out to Adam, who did the our guide on how to beat that final boss. You should definitely watch that if you haven't beaten the final boss yet, and you're somehow listening to our spoiler discussion. It's so funny. I felt like the lead-up to the boss was way more difficult than the final boss itself. Um, there is, there's 20 sub-levels in this cave. A lot of them are quite difficult, but, you know, thanks to the accessibility features like Rewind Time, it's not impossible. It's not like the den of dreams or dream den or something from pikmin 2 which made me want right. to pull my hair out <laughs> um so but as long as you get you do those night missions and you gather those glow pikmin you're in for a pretty uh, it's pretty smooth across the way like the final boss is challenging kind of but i didn't lose many pikmin to it i lost way more pikmin going up to it than i did um than i did actually fighting the thing so it is really cool how they tied in like every element it's like a typical final boss thing to do but i always appreciate it you know yeah final boss isn't yeah I, i'm kind of mixed on it the final boss itself is fine like yeah. i don't know I, I i thought it was cute you know i, I like the <laughs> cute for a final boss like it's a <laughs> giant dog of course it's cute um you know and it's actually not that difficult as long as you know like the trick, which, or if you won't even want to consider a trick, but I had no. So Joey, you need but the room before the boss. You've got all those all those flowers. I'm like, I don't need these. I don't need these, all these different color <laughs> Pikmin. The cave told me, or the game told me which ones I needed. I brought them with me. So uh, so I went in there. And I got to the electric part. I'm like, what the hell do I do? I can't <laughs> freaking destroy these yellow electric orbs. I'm screwed. I kept losing 
Pikmin constantly. I had no idea that the uh, the green Pikmin, whatever they're called again, the, the glow um, Pikmin, glow Pikmin, thank you, that the glow Pikmin can also that they're resilient to it. So once I, I looked at Adam's guy as well that we have, I'm like, oh, that solves my problem. And then from there, it was a cakewalk. Right. So that was fine, but. I feel like, you know, for me, coming from Pikmin 3, especially playing the deluxe version not that long ago, this entire sequence feels like a letdown. Again, I already hate caves, so the entire 20 mm -hmm. floors, I hated it. I'm like, guys, just get me out of here. But the way Pikmin 3 did, it was so much better, where you had the final boss as this factor throughout the entire final level. It took days, too. Like, yeah. it felt epic. You earned that. Like, when you beat it, it felt triumphant. And here you don't, I didn't feel that sense of triumph. It just felt very flat, kind of. Yeah. It's like, all right. Maybe the end of the cave, I beat the boss, and now we're flying off the planet like we've seen in every other Pikmin game, you know? <laughs> yeah, I agree. The Pikmin, the final boss in Pikmin 3 is just, just ain't no, no competition there, like, at all. I would argue it's probably the best final boss in all the Pikmin games, but more, you're more than welcome to disagree with me if you thought Pikmin 2 was better. Like we said, it's fine. I don't really have any strong feelings towards it, any strong, like, like, dislikes towards it. I just thought, okay, it's a final boss. I don't play these games to like be overtly challenged. I play them to right. collect everything, beat everything. So I felt like, yeah, okay, I beat the boss and all right, let's um, arrest Louis, please. Like, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone lock that guy up. He's, uh, he's insane. <laughs> Is that everything about Pikmin 4? Is there anything else we need to touch on or everything we want to we want to discuss ourselves? The or? after credits scene with Nick Fury. No, there's nothing oh else. Oh my really. god. <laughs> Pikmin well, actually, will return. That, that does that does remind me of basically the post credits of Pikmin 3 that teased some larger mystery, which they have left unresolved here, which actually this is what I want to bring up. Pikmin 4, as far as we can tell, is basically a reboot. Yeah. It basically restarts the entire series, restarts the timeline. Yes, I know there are references to, Pik to the previous Pikmin, but story-wise, as far as I can tell, it is like they hit reset, which is weird, but I don't feel like they needed to. No. I don't care all that much. It's just a weird decision, especially when you title a Pikmin 4 and the fact that they teased some larger mystery at the end of Pikmin 3 that they have not followed up on. That's the thing that bugs me the most. Like, why are they, why are people People constantly shipwrecking here like I want to know why and you know they have that awesome final boss from three and they don't really follow up on what that is here like the the water wraith returns in this game as well but there's no larger mystery to it unless there's more that I've missed um and I, it's like I, I love that they've been teasing this like weird more like science fiction elements but they did nothing more with it here from what I can tell yeah um it, you know what breaks my heart is thinking like the Pikmin 4 we probably could have gotten on Wii U would have probably been yeah. a sequel to three but I, I guess for whatever reason, and this is just my theory, like they just decided it's time to take Pikmin in a completely new direction. And you know, because I guess they, Nintendo just rethought a lot of things during the Wii U area because they couldn't fail that hard again. And now Pikmin 4, from what I understand, is a big success. Um, at least it was in Japan being like the top selling Pikmin game like of all time. Um, so I'd imagine that success carried over elsewhere. Just the Switch effect in general. It um, is, yeah. So yeah, it's just nice to see Pikmin back and with a fairly solid game. I know you were mixed on a couple of things, um, but in my opinion, I think like this is this is definitely one of the best Pikmin games. Like I know there's only four of them, but still, I really enjoyed my time <laughs> uh, with this. Five, Joey. Five, five Pikmin games. Sorry, hey Pikmin fan, <laughs> fan. <laughs> That's right. Yep, they're gonna leave the comments if you if we don't say it. So. Oh, no. so I guess then two final questions then Joey. Do you think this game justified the 10 year, 11 year wait? Uh, that's a tough question. Here, that's a tough question for me to answer because I really wasn't participating in that wait, right? Yeah, I that's true. Actually, you're right. You weren't. So I guess for you, it doesn't matter. Although, but know? at the same time, I was feeling y'all Pikmin fans. I was like, oh, y'all, Miyamoto just announced, like, announced this game in an interview. When's it coming? Please throw these guys a bone here. Um, right. But um, yeah, I still felt like, oh, this is, this is a really fun game, really cool. It's glad to see Pikmin. I'm glad to see Pikmin back in the limelight with a new game and not a deluxe port or what have you. I thought it was a fun time. Good, yeah. Um, so what would you rate it then? I liked it a lot. I, I, I very much liked it a lot. Like, yeah, there are those 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 little flaws I have with it. Like, it's, it's way too easy most of the time. That's mainly, mainly like the big one I have of it. But at the same time, I can't deny, like I was enjoying my time with it. Like I was playing that any chance I got, which was not something I could have said for Pikmin 2 because I, I avoided playing that game as much as I could. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, I wasn't too big on it back in the day either. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I were to rate just all of our shipwreck tale, I would say I also like that a lot. Like <laughs> nice. that's, that, that is the quintessential Pikmin experience right there. The only reason that it's holding it back is the fact that 
you know, with it being a retelling, there's not a whole lot of new stuff there outside of the inherent features of Pikmin 4. Like, you're still stuck with just the three core Pikmin, whereas in a sequel, I would hope that there would be, you know, to Pikmin 1, I would hope there'd be more Pikmin types. In any case, I want more of that. That's great. As an entire package, I liked it. You know, mm -hmm. I... It's, I, I wanted to love it, of course. I wish it were that proper Pikmin 1 sequel I've been waiting for. It isn't, and that's, you know, that's fine. That's clearly making a lot of people happy. And I still enjoyed it at the end of the day, even if I actually did not like well, almost half of it. <laughs> so the fact that I liked it still, in spite of the half I did not, does speak to how, how good that half of uh, the rest of it is. Yeah, you so. know for sure, like, you don't, you, there's not enough here to make you mixed on the game, and there's not enough here to make you dislike it enough to give it that rating, so, in the most part, the liked does make sense from what, everything you've been telling me. Yeah, the fact that I actually played it all the way through says, you know, speaks to the fact that I actually did end up liking it, and it didn't, you know, in my opinion of it, didn't lessen uh, near the end of the game or after having beat it as Tears of the Kingdom kind of did, where, like, for me, that game just kind of fell apart. Like, I look back on, like, what was that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pikmin 4, I, I see it. I, I'm like, okay, it's not what I wanted. I still had fun. Except, you know, get rid of the caves in the future, please. No more caves. <laughs> bring back, if Joey, it is, get rid of the caves and bring back the time limit. I will be happy. That's what, that's, I'll be set, so. <laughs> yes. All right. Anything else, Joey? Any final thoughts? Uh, not really, but um, if we're thinking about is this the best Pikmin game, obviously you're going to disagree on what the yeah. best is. But, like, um, I think it's too soon to tell. I also don't know if, like, if I say it is the best, that'd be recency bias. Or if I say it's not the best, it's because I have too much nostalgia for, like, this and that. I know I said I'm a brand new Pikmin fan, but I played three here and there back when it came out on Wii U, but I never beat it. So, that's it. for me, it's between Pikmin 3 and 4 on which one's the best, but... I will say Pikmin 4 is probably the the one I enjoyed playing the most. So, yeah. All right. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, it's funny. I will put those two about the level with each other, too. Only with Pikmin 1 above them. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I like elements of 4. I like the elements of 3. It's just, I, you know, and the 2 is below everything else, of course. So, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see where they go with, uh, you know, with the series in the future. Like, I hope that they find a way to bridge that gap where people who really did like Pikmin 1 and people who like the rest can really like come together. It's like, okay, here we go. This is the this is the ultimate Pikmin game. Like, you know, if, you, if it's as simple as a time toggle, so be it, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'll be interested to see where they go from here. And luckily it does seem like with the success of Pikmin 4 so far that they probably will follow up on it, you know, sooner than 10 years this time, yeah. so. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for us here, everyone. So, uh, at, the, at the end of the day, Joey liked it, or sorry, Joey liked it a lot, I liked it. But let us know what you thought of in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Am I off base? Is anyone else here a Gen 1-er when it comes to Pikmin? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> love to hear your thoughts in the comments, everyone. With that, thanks for watching, we'll catch you later. Bye.